Hello and welcome to this video. Today I am analyzing the anatomy of a 70s F1 car. To do that, I am using Torsten Palm and his rented Hesketh F1 car in 1975. He entered two races during that year as a privateer and got one start in his home country, Sweden, in Understorp, where he finished in 10th place. This car, as far as I know, is exactly the same as the car for the Esketh F1 team driver, James Hunt. Note that although each team's car was visually very different, the cars were more or less similar in construction and concept during this era, featuring an aluminium monocoque, a 3000cc engine, double wishbone suspension, and it was the start of aerodynamics in F1. I loved F1 from the 70s. It was an experimental decade. It started with cigar-shaped cars and ended as inverted aeroplanes that would stick to the track and were capable of crazy cornering speeds. It was the last romantic decade in Grand Prix racing. When it finished, F1 was just one more business on this planet. There were no more gentleman drivers. Advertisement, marketing and TV ruled the business, shaping it to what we know nowadays. It was also the last decade full of death on the track. Safety in racing was still in its infancy and the racetracks were beginning to change to meet new regulations. It was a time of change. Drivers were true heroes back then. They knew they were facing death each time they would enter that monocoque to the track. They had a lot of respect between them because of that. Well, most of them did. Most of these cars were powered by the Ford DFV, a naturally aspirated V8 with 3000cc and about 470 horsepower. It was the standard engine and the reason why there was great F1 racing in the 70s. Everybody, well, almost, was using the same engine. The tires were pretty basic when compared to nowadays. The selection was only between wet or dry tires and nothing in between. They were 50 centimeters wide. The cars had three pedals, clutch, brake and gas in the usual order. The steering wheel is small. It has three quarters of a turn between full steering wheel and the slightest movement gives a large wheel turn. Inside the cockpit you can see the temperatures for water, oil and the tachometer which is the only really important instrument. 10,000 revs is the limit and there was no speedometer. You do not need one while sitting in there. The gearbox is manual and has 5 gears and reverse. It is sitting very close to the steering wheel. Cars just began to have mandatory safety features because the drivers were sitting in a bathtub of petrol. 150 liters of petrol surrounds the driver in the 70s F1 car. You have to be brave to be in there. And that's why a sprinkler system has been built in. In case of a crash, the mandatory fuel system stops, triggers are automatically triggered, and fire extinguisher gas is sprayed from this. At the same time, in case of a fire, the driver is provided with hair through this hose, which is injected here and further into the helmet, so the driver can take the oxygen. To finish, the mandatory six-point harness. Let's now see this F1 car 
or one exactly like it performing in the Monaco track in 2021. Enjoy! And this is it, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did give it a like, subscribe for more videos like this, drop a line in the comments section if you have something to say or ask and I see you in the next video, take care.